And so what that means is we're going to need to put a halt on all privacy sandbox testing for the foreseeable future. <sighs> Seriously, just because Google pushed back its third-party cookie deprecation plans again? I'm telling you, it's going to happen eventually. Mm, not exactly. I mean, that didn't help, but the UK's Competition and Markets Authority put out this report, ran down all the issues with the various privacy sandbox proposals, legal caught wind, and told us to put a pin in things. Okay. But the private aggregation API seems to be okay. At least I don't see it getting called out as problematic in this report. Oh, really? What's that one do? All right, let's get into it. Private aggregation API is really going to help us answer quite a few questions. Uh, one of the most important being is reach and frequency. How many people am I actually reaching with my media? Uh, how many messages are they getting? As for how the private aggregation API works, well, first a refresher on the shared storage API. As we've covered previously in this Privacy Sandbox Explainer series, shared storage is a cookie-less method for Google's Chrome browser to store information about people's interactions across sites. Like, how many times someone was shown a given ad on different publishers' properties. This analogy, let's say, the world is the web, billboards are ads, cars are web browsers, and the people driving cars are the people browsing the web. Now to use shared storage, an advertiser basically attaches a piece of code to its ads that tells the browser to save a piece of information, like the number of times someone was served a specific ad in a folder specifically reserved for that advertiser. While shared storage provided a means of tabulating those cross-site interactions, it locked up all that information in the browser. The private aggregation API, though, offers up a way for companies to access that info, albeit in a privatized, aggregated context, as I guess the name indicates. Shared storage is more helping you from that decisioning aspect and knowing when those changes are made. But all of that information is living within that ecosystem of the JavaScript, et cetera. So when that's happening, you're not seeing that end result of it as a marketer. Um, and that result is not being seen by the publisher either. It's living in this separate space. So private aggregation is actually taking these different calls uh, and building larger aggregate reports. So now how does the private aggregation API work? An ad is served to a person online and tells the browser, hey, log this exposure in shared storage. Also, I want to use the private aggregation API, so make me an aggregatable report. The aggregatable report has two main pieces of information, the aggregation key and the aggregatable value. The aggregation key is basically the collection of information that the advertiser wants the browser to jot down. Each aggregation key can have one or more fields of information, like the browser's country level location and the ID of the ad that was served. And then the aggregatable value is the number corresponding to a person fitting the aggregation key criteria. The thing to know about aggregation keys is that they are very specific. An aggregation key needs to be created for each collection of information an advertiser wants. So if an advertiser wants people's country level location logged, then it needs to create a separate aggregation key for each country they want included. Same for something like people's ages. And if the advertiser wants to know how many people in a given age group from a given country were served the ad, then it would need aggregation keys for each combination of country and age group. There are obviously a lot of classic keys that will be important to everybody, things like demographics, geographics, there's almost no party that wouldn't find that type of information useful. Then when you're actually going to pull that data, it's important to sit and think not only what is the larger you know, grouping of let's say it's age or age, but do I need every age range when I pull it? Do, how do I need that broken down? And so pulling the data that is necessary to answer the questions that you want is the first place to start. After the browser puts together the aggregatable report, it sends it to the advertiser's server, but the report's encrypted. That way, the advertiser can't make sense of its contents. As other browsers send aggregatable reports, the advertiser batches them together until it feels it has enough. How does the advertiser know when it has enough? Well, it's a judgment call. Something the advertiser needs to keep in mind is how accurate it wants the resulting reports to be once they're processed. Google doesn't want an advertiser to be able to trace the reports back to individual people, so it's designed the private aggregation API API, where the more reports in a batch and the higher total aggregatable values per aggregation key, the less noise is applied to the results. Google recommends batches contain at least 100 reports. The more data you're pulling, the more you're reducing the noise that's coming in, which means your results become more true to what is actually happening. But at the same time, you're limited to the amount of data that you can pull at any one period of time. Conversely, uh, to reduce that limitation, you add in noise. So there is that comparison, that balance that you need to achieve. Once the advertiser has its batch of aggregatable reports ready, it sends them to what's called an aggregation service. This could be an ad tech vendor that then puts the encrypted batches into what's basically a highly secure server called a trusted execution environment. In there, the reports are decrypted, noise is applied, and the individual aggregatable reports are tallied to create a summary report. 
As the name implies, this summary report boils down all the aggregatable reports into a concise TLDR, adding up all the aggregatable values for each aggregation key to a single sum that is sent back to the advertiser. The insights in these summary reports may seem a little shallow, at least compared to the conversion measurement provided by the Privacy Sandbox's attribution reporting API, but in a post-cookie landscape, whenever the industry enters that post-cookie landscape, private aggregation API still stands to provide a pretty crucial view. Are we getting the region frequency that we want? Are we actually delivering the creative content that we need? And so the private aggregation API is really the opportunity to answer those media questions for marketers to be able to really truly build and optimize towards the right type of campaign for their solution and not just focusing purely on what is the end product that I'm getting. <laughs>